Welcome to Livewire at Home. I'm at home. You're at home. We have an awesome episode for you today as we are going to experience a crazy shipwreck and see what happened to Paul as he was stuck on the shipwreck. You don't want to miss this episode. There are three things you need to know about Livewire at Home. The first is that this is designed for families, so kids, go get your parents. Second, there will be time to do games and crafts and science experiments and to sing songs. Pause the video, participate in those things that will really make your experience so much better. And third, remember to like, comment, and share. I have two songs for you that will really improve your experience. The first is... Counting on God by Faith STL. The second is Never Be Shaken by Shout. You can find the link to both of those in the description below, as well as a link to a full two hours of live wire at home worship songs. Uh, check those out. They are a great, great time. So if you live here in Rockdale County, your school started this week, or you may have started sometime soon, but I want to know how your school week went. Tell me one high and one low from your week in the comments below. I'd love to hear about your week. Alright crew, you are here on our ship and our job is to get to Rome to deliver all our cargo. Just so you know, some of our cargo are prisoners here, but don't worry, the commander of that army tells me that these prisoners are pretty good. He even likes one of these guys named Paul. I don't know why he likes him, but we should start on our journey. So, hoist the mainsail, let's go out to sea. All right, you guys, the, the wind is working against us, so double time it. Work extra hard. Pull the rope. Pull the rope. Let's get our sail set so we can get to shore. Ready? Pull. Eve. Ho. Eve. Ho. Eve. <sighs> guys, guys, it is not working, so we have a decision to make. Should we continue to fight against the wind, or should we let it sail us to another port down south? Alright, alright, I hear you. we're going to go to Fairhaven, we're going to go, so go ahead and let go of the rope, and let's head back towards the shore. Alright, whew, alright, we are in Fairhaven, we're a little bit off course, but that is okay. Uh, but, here's the issue. Fairhaven is not a great place to hang out for the winter. It doesn't have the right things. Our ship could be damaged. And just a little bit further, there's another port that we could get to. Now this port uh, is perfect for us, but here's the thing. We are so close to winter. We're so close to a bad storm that if we get hit by the storm, we might be in trouble. But I think we should risk it. I think we should go further. Even though this guy named Paul says we shouldn't, I think we should keep going to go to this next port and not stay here so we can set up and winterize our boat just right. What do you guys say? All right, here we go. We're going to take on the next thing. So everyone get to the rope. He hoist the, the mainsail. All right, good job. Let's go. We got a little bit of wind. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. There is a strong wind coming. Uh, northeast. It's coming from the northeast. It's going to push us away. Everyone, fight against the wind. Fight against the wind. Pull the man. Oh. Whew. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Oh no, we can't do it. The waves are going to get us. It's going to crash. Oh, another wave. Oh, another wave. Keep fighting. Oh man, this wind is the worst I've ever seen. We're taking way off course. Guys, our ship might be falling apart. Quick, let's tie let's throw some ropes under and let's tie our ropes together so we might be able to save the ship. Ready? Throw the rope over. Ready? Alright, run to the other side. Grab the rope that comes under. Oh alright, let's tie it up. Alright, we got one. Let's do another one. Ready? Alright, run to the other side. Let's grab the rope and pull it over. Oh. Alright, here we go. Let's keep going. Oh man, it has been raining and pouring and the wind's been going for three days straight. We haven't seen the sun. We haven't seen the stars. I have no idea where we are. Let's make sure that we can survive. Let's throw over all our cargo that isn't necessary. So here, help me heave some cargo over ready. Alright, here we go. Get some more cargo. Alright, this will help us against the waves so that they won't hit as hard. And let's just keep going. Alright. We made it through the storm. I have no idea where we are how far away we are to go all we can do is just keep sailing along so let's ration our food I don't know how long this will take but we will keep sailing along and we sailed and sailed Whew. All right, uh, about 20 days have passed, still no sign of land, uh, I don't know what we're going to do, but let's just have some fun, let's pass some time, we got a cool craft that you can do, uh, all you need is a clear water bottle, and fill it halfway up with water, and add up some blue uh, food coloring, and shake it up, and then top it off with some oil just any olive oil or cooking oil uh, and then make sure that you seal the lid really well you might even want to use some glue on the lid to keep it stuck and then when you tilt it will tilt go back and forth and you can create a little storm in the bottle so when we're done with this so that is a great craft to help pass the time now it has been 27 days and uh, this guy Paul he is in a prisoner that we've been taking along but he has something that he wants to say to us so I think we should listen to him so Paul stood up and said gentlemen I warned you about setting sail so close to winter and you didn't listen to me and we are in trouble now but I have good news for you last night an angel came to me and he told me that I would go to Caesar that I would live and he said that every single one of us would live our ship would be destroyed but every one of us will live, and our rescue is coming very, very soon. So let's go ahead and eat everything that we can so that we are full and strong uh, to, for this last part of the journey. So what do you guys think? Should we listen to Paul? Should we go ahead and trust in his God who you might not know anything about? Or should we try to do our own thing? All right, let's listen to Paul. Let's go ahead and have a good meal because I've been starving. Rationing food this long has not been good. Uh, so let's go ahead and eat. 
Did you hear that? They said land ho. They can see land. That is awesome. Let's go check it out. There it is. Land. Beautiful, beautiful land. All right, let's cut all our anchors. Let's go. Let's try to get as light as possible so we don't hit some rocks. And let's see if we can't get to that land. Beautiful land. So quick, let's go cut some anchors. Cut the anchors. All right, let's go. Let's go sailing. Oh, okay, we're getting close. We're getting close. I think it's only a couple hundred feet away. Oh, did you feel that? Oh, man, I think we hit some sand, some shore. Oh, man, the land is still a couple hundred feet away, but it looks like we're stuck. All right, let's see if we can't get ourselves out of this. Ready? Let's pull. Ready? Pull. See if we can't get ourselves out. Pull. Oh. Pull. Oh. Pull. Oh. Man, can't seem to escape. We are stuck. And oh no, the waves are coming in and they are breaking apart our ship. I think our ship is done for. All we can do is swim ashore. Oh, but we should probably kill the prisoners so that they don't escape. What do you guys think? No? No? Okay, we got Paul was the one who helped save us. Alright, we'll go ahead and let them be alive. And let's swim ashore. So ready, everyone? Dive in and ready, swim as hard as you can to get to shore. Ready? We made it. I made it. Alright, let's do a head count. Did everyone make it? 276. That's it. That's everyone. Everyone made it alive on shore. Just as Paul said. Everyone made it alive on shore. Just as Paul said God would do for us. God must have kept his promises to Paul and to us. Maybe we should consider trusting in God. Now that we're safe on shore, let's play a game. This game is called Shipwreck and it's all about you following my commands. So make sure you have plenty of room to move around because you'll be moving around quite a bit in this game. Because when I say stern, I want you to run to the right side of the room. When I say bow, I want you to run to the left side of the room. If I say boom, I want you to duck. If I say captain on board, you need to stand up straight and go aye. Go aye, captain. If I say drop anchor, you need to lay in your back, put your hands and feet in the air and pretend like you're an anchor. Got it? All right, here we go. Are you ready? Stern. Bow. Stern. Boom. Captain on board. Drop anchor. Captain on board. Boom. Bow. Stern. Captain on board. Drop anchor. Bow. Stern. Bow. Stern. Boom. Drop anchor. Captain on board. Bow. Stern. Bow. Boom. Boom. Stern. Drop anchor. All right, have a seat. That was fun. We pick up our story with Paul as he was just able to safely swim ashore. And he landed in an island called Malta. And the people there were very generous and they and even though it was cold and raining, they set a fire and they invited everyone to eat with them and to live in their homes. And so Paul was going and he grabbed some wood for the fire and when he threw the wood on the fire, a viper came and bit his hand 
and Paul, he shook it off back into the fire. And the people who were watching said, this man must have been a horrible, horrible criminal. Because even though he was able to escape the shipwreck, he was going to get killed by a viper. And so they sat back and they watched Paul and they waited for him to swell up and die. But Paul kept doing his thing and nothing happened to him. He was still safe. And they began to whisper among each other, he's still alive. Is that possible? And they waited a little bit more and Paul was still going about fine. And they whispered, man, he must not be a criminal. He must be a god. And there was one of the rulers of the place. His dad had gotten a fever and was really sick. And so Paul went up to them and Paul prayed for this man and he was healed. And so everyone on the island started bringing their sick to Paul so that Paul could heal them. And Paul started sharing to the gospel on this small little island called Malta. And they stayed there for about two and a half months where Paul performed miracles, shared the gospel, and people believed. And finally, winter was over. They were able to take another ship and make it to Rome. And there, Paul was given the freedom to rent his own house, to under house guard, but still his own place. And he invited people from all over the community, and he shared the gospel. And for two years, while Paul waited trial, he shared the gospel without, with boldness and without any hindrance. And the gospel went out. And that's how the book of Acts ends. We know from history that Paul eventually got his chance to, share, to speak to Caesar. And Caesar let him free. And Paul went on to Spain and he was, spent, was a missionary for the rest of his life. But then, at the end of his life, there was a new persecution of Christians. This time, not from the Jews, but from the Roman, but from the Roman Empire. And there, in Rome, Paul was martyred. And that's how his life ended. And we know that, that Paul lived an incredible life, all committed to Jesus. He wrote 13 of the books that are in our New Testament that encouraged churches. He went far and wide to tell people about Jesus. And all this time, it was because God kept his promises to Paul. Because God is a good promise keeper. Which reminds me of our memory verse from last month. It is Numbers 23, verse 19. Do you remember it? It says, God is not a human being, and he will not lie. He is not a human, and he does not change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. And what he promises, he makes come true. Let's see if you remember that. So stand up with me, and let's see if you can remember this memory verse. It's Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a human being, and he will not lie. He is not a human, and he does not change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. And what he promises, he makes come true. You see if you can remember the song. Come on, come on, what, what, come on, come on, what? Numbers 23, verse 19, whoa, what he promises, I believe. God is not a human being, and he will not lie. He's not a human, and he does not change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. What he promises, he makes come true. God is not a human being, and he will not lie. He is not a human, and he does not change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. What he promises. Come on, come on. He makes the 
come true. God is not a human being, and he will not lie. He's not a human, and he does not change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. What he promises, he makes come true. Numbers 23, verse 19. What he promises, I believe. So God kept his promise to Paul. God promised that Paul would make it all the way to Rome, and that's what he did. Even when faced with shipwrecks and vipers and crazy obstacles, God kept his promise to Paul. And you know what? God has made promises to us that he does keep because God is a promise keeper. That's why our old memory verse reminds us that God always keeps his promises. So let me ask you, can you remember what are some of the promises in God's word that he's made for us? Pause the video and talk about it as a family. Do you remember the promises that God, Jesus promised that he'd be with us always? Do you remember the promises that he that if we ask anything in Jesus' name, God hears us and love. Do you remember the promise that if we say we're sorry for our sins, that he will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Do you remember the promise that is made in Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, that nothing can separate us from God's love because Jesus took away our sins and we can forever remember that God's love is with us. Those are incredible, incredible promises and I'm sure you talk about even more. So what is one promise that God has made that you want to remember this week? Go ahead and pause the video, talk about it as a family. What was the one promise you came up with? Comment below with that one promise. And finally, how can you remember that God made that promise for you? What can you do this week to keep remembering that promise? Maybe write it on note cards and post it up where you are doing your virtual learning. Uh, whatever you can think of. So think about something. Think of something creative. Pause the video. Talk about how you can remember God's promises now. And now it's time for the challenge. You have 148,500 points. We're almost 150,000 points. And when we get to 150,000 points, I will get a pie in my face. So how do we earn points? Well, the first way is to tell our monthly memory verse. So our monthly memory verse is Hebrews 10.25. It says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. It's really important to encourage each other because it's really easy to forget God's promises. But when we have a community of people to encourage us to remember God's promises, we can grow so let's see if you guys can do this memory verse song. Not giving up of meeting together As some are in the habit of doing But encouraging one another And all the more as you see the day approaching
The second way Naren points is Julie's challenge. Julie's challenge is something like saying the Lord's Prayer. So if you remember the Lord's Prayer, go ahead and videotape yourself saying it and post it using the hashtag bringing the hope. The third way to earn points is to share this video. Every share on Facebook is worth 5,000 points. And finally, our weekly Bring the Hope challenge is to write a note of encouragement for on your sidewalk for people to see passing by. Take a picture of that note of encouragement and post it in the comments below. Thanks for joining us this week. I can't wait to start. See you next week.